There's the space that when you're standing underneath that piece, there's, you know, kind of dialogue between the viewer and the figure. That's really important for me, that, that kind of interaction with the, with the audience. This is a public art piece for the city of Philadelphia. It's a percent for art sculpture that uh, I started in 2016. And over the last five years, we have been developing and now building the sculpture out of over 5,000 pieces of aluminum plates. A lot of brainstorming, multiple different directions and ideas. I don't know how many of these I'm gonna make in my lifetime in Philly. And you know, I wanted to do it right. It's a two-part piece that is suspended 30 feet over a side street in uh, Center City on the 1200 block of Cuthbert, right in front of the Reading Terminal and the Convention Center. So the sculpture is gonna be installed over the street on a uh, vehicle bridge that originates on Arch Street. Well, it's funny because the first version was something that I thought was really impactful. You know, it was a completely different message, I think, in the piece. It's the first one that was authorized by the city. It was a 12-inch model. That was a clay study at 1 30th, the final scale, just you know, trying to understand what that new composition, bigger scale figures uh, interacting with that bridge would look like. It's always nice to kind of look at those first inspiring pieces. I hope that it kind of reinforces with uh, like the individual that it resonates the strength of their place within their community, within their society. You know, there's a role of each one of these figures in this action between the bridge, the, the group, and without one of them, you know, all of this structure would falter. So it's, you know, it's seeing that you are important, that your voice is strong, that your, you know, contributions are important for everything that it's contributing to. Also that, you know, you are reliant on those structures that you're working towards. What's interesting about these figures is they're both simultaneously reliant on that bridge for their purpose, but you know they're, they're actually going to be suspended from it, even though they look like they're sustaining it. I think there's a nice relation back to the title, Contra Fuerte, the counter force, and that, you know, there's that excitement connected to those initial leaps. As you're like fine tuning and fine tuning, and you're kind of polishing this thing, and all those hours of polishing it, you look back to kind of that first little study and, and you're, you know, like this little sketch right here. And it's like, you know, so rough and, and simple and the energy is right there. But that's kind of what, that's the, the step that kind of took me towards the final composition. A group of people coming together to kind of overcome this task that's, you know, overbearing and overwhelming. And, and so they're working in unison to either support this structure or lift this structure up. And, you know, for me, this is, this is kind of a monument for collective action, uh, working in community. And it's also about resilience and, and facing adversity and, and kind of overcoming the challenges that are thrown at you. It has become its own task. And, you know, over the years of facing the challenges to build this from, you know, production disruption, moving locations, uh, establishing a new workshop, and, and then, you know, the pandemic, we've also kind of overcome this, this giant task, this giant struggle. We are preparing and assembling the aluminum plates to create the surface of the sculpture. To this point, we've had to do a lot of substructure construction and engineering of the components that give the piece strength. And the final phase of production and assembly is layering together the plates that make up the surface. And so we're about 90% done the north side of the sculpture. So you're gonna see us assembling plates to create you know, layers of the surface. It's really exciting because it's kind of the end of the sculpture. So there's pieces that are capping off and terminating you know, shoulders, arms, knees, and things like that. We finished off one of the faces last time you were here. This piece uh, has a couple more layers that we can add on that will complete the shoulder and then start the head as a final isolated form. Uh, so this is going to cap off, and then um, of the rest of the sculpture, if you come around here, you can see that the, from the shoulder of the top female piece all the way around this arm and to that figure's head is all still one continuous layer. Um, so we're going to be working on adding another few layers to this, um, 
and that will you know slowly close off. This these parts make up the rest of her uh, torso and shoulder, which will close off and then start creating her arm and her shoulder. Uh, so that's what we're working on today, together with the dovetail that locks it itself in place to the proceeding form. Um, and actually what we have here is an aberration in that circle. And I have to take this off and grind. Zoe Kester, I am a studio manager and a fabricator, studio assistant. My role is kind of just leading the assembly and, you know, making sure that everything is running smoothly. My name is Joe DeFilippis. Uh, I'm an artist assistant uh, for Miguel and I work on all the different parts of the sculpture uh, from the chemical etching to assembly um, and all the little things in between. So when we started the north side, that was my favorite part, you know, finishing up the south side, and then we just ran right into the north side. It was like, you know, a day and night change, and it was nice to, you know, be able to start from scratch. I'm really looking forward to seeing it go up. I want to be at the unveiling, and yeah, I think it's going to be really cool. I've been here for about a year and a half now. I met Miguel first when he came to uh, give me a studio visit in college. It's about coming together and supporting each other. It's a lot about team building, kind of like what we do here. It's totally a feminist piece. While I was working on it, I found out that I was going to have my first kid. I was going to be my daughter. And, you know, 2016, we were coming into the last election cycle. And I was really excited that my daughter was going to be born. And she was going to be born into a world with the first American woman president. And, you know, the message that was that I was thinking about, you know, of this piece and how she would be reading, you know, the depiction of women, how she would be, you know, seeing the message that I was producing. I really wanted it to, you know, stand the test of time, but also, you know, kind of show the role that I see women in our society and where I'd like to see that go in the future. So I did, you know, elevate the female figures in the piece to the higher, you know, portion of the composition. And if you look at it, they're actually kind of engaging the bridge itself more than anybody else in the composition. You know, they're, they're kind of like holding into place. The other figures in the composition are, are playing these support roles, and taking the weight and, and creating stability and allowing for those top figures to kind of hold things together. But, you know, that isn't what happened. It isn't the world that, that she was born into. And then the composition kind of went into a different direction. It, it kind of was imbued with this sense of resistance and, and this kind of pushback against something that felt a lot more overwhelming, a lot more overbearing. You know, the four years that we've been working on it, that kind of sense of tension really came out. The name itself speaks to that. So Contrafuerte is a, in Spanish refers to a, a counterforce. It's a buttress. It's actually an architectural term. If you break it down, the word literally translates into counterforce or against force. So I thought that there was this really nice interplay between these two groups that are working simultaneously, you know, maybe in unison, maybe against each other, but, you know, nobody can, can stop in their action. They all have to keep in their roles. And ultimately trying to, you know, work on something, build something, or, or resist something that's, that's like bigger than themselves. This artwork tells a tale of a group of individuals unified in facing uh, overwhelming undertaking. The story is mired with adversity and setbacks and ultimately triumphs. And in true form of life imitating art, the odyssey of this artwork's creation mirrors the work itself. The time we spent putting this together to see this up here is just, I, I mean, I can't put that in the words, you know? It's sad that it came to a close, but I mean, this is. It's unbelievable, yeah. Today's been so wonderful to be here and see everybody who's had like a hand in everything. It's been so nice to like see everybody come together for the project as a whole. And I'm just so thankful to be a part of it. Miguel, this is an incredible thing. I'm glad that you got through it. It's your time. 
I hope people get to see it all over the world and uh, uh, I love you. I'm so proud of you. Can I say it in Spanish? Yeah, okay. Hijo, eh, hoy, en este día, cuando te hablaban de ti, el orgullo que yo tengo fue pues casi eh, indescriptible, no se puede describir. Eh, es una cosa maravillosa, hijo. Te quiero. Most importantly, I'd like to thank my wife, Lindsay. Your strength and enduring love held me together at so many parts of this project. This sculpture is in part a monument to raising up strong women in our society. And I love that you are the role model for our children to look up to. Thank you. Miguel, I am so glad this day is here, and I'm so proud of you, and I love you, babe, and can't wait to see what's next. Oh, I'm just, I'm so grateful for the reception and, and how this has been celebrated by the city and all the people, and, and I couldn't ask for a better welcoming of the piece for Philadelphia. Thank you.